Hey, it's Ronald Jones II, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. It's me, your host with the most, Mike the Fantasy Hitman Right, joined by my best friend. Which best friend is with me today? Best friend, Jason. It's, it's my best friend, Jason Moore. Surprise, surprise. Look, I know I had a different best friend a couple weeks ago, but Jason, you're bet you've, you've uh, reestablished your dominance on the leaderboard. Welcome back to the top of Mike's BFF list. How's that feel? It feels good to be here. Um, you know, I, I know a lot of people want to be your best friend. I they, get yes, to be your true. best friend. Um, and so that that's that's great. Andy can deal with the frozen tundra of Arizona <laughs> and frozen pipes, which what is happening? Why is it snowing in Arizona right now? What's really funny is, is the irony of the timing. Because if you listen to the Spitballers podcast, our our side hustle, our all comedy show, you know how the, this show, the Fantasy Footballers, no guff. We don't take no guff. We don't allow that crap on this show. We keep on track. That's Fantasy right. Show, Spitballers podcast, nothing but guff. It's like nothing. imagine a train with no tracks on ice. Have you seen the Polar Express? <laughs> we go anywhere we want. Yes, it's just it's just jackknifed from the very beginning. But anyways, so that show is all guff. And on a recent episode, we were complaining about how hot it was because I had to turn on the air conditioning inside of my house. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, that's how hot it got. And then all of a sudden, this like frozen rain and hail and weird snow. It, I don't know what's going on with the world today, but it's it's just twenty twenty one happening. So. Yeah, so Andy will be away for the episode, and it's just me and Jason Moore. Welcome in. Today we will be talking the truth, my friends, the truth about running backs. Uh, the Tuesday episode we covered, you know, the majority of, of the top half of RB1s. So now we're getting into the nitty-gritty, those guys that sort of performed, sometimes they came through. What was the actual truth about those players? If you want to watch this podcast, you can do that. Jason, tell them where they could do that. Oh, man. It's this place called YouTube. It's a new site. It's coming on hot. I think it's going to take off. I think it's going to hit. But YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers uh, is where you can see our beautiful faces. YouTube is taking off like GameStop. Oh, and- <laughs> to the moon. Diamond and- hands. <laughs> GameStop and AMC hitting, hitting things hard these days. I uh, hope everyone is staying safe out there. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Please follow us on uh, follow us on our socials on Instagram. I am at FF Hitman. Jason is at Jason FFL. You can follow Andy at Andy Holloway. And the show. You know, you know the the big time. The big time show is Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Before we get into the truth, we gotta buy or sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, let's see what we got today. Buy or Sell, this one's set up here. Uh, Our producer, our good friend Judge Giamatti, has given us something to buy or sell. Ronald Jones will be a value, and he capitalized value. So, I mean, he's talking a value in 2021 fantasy drafts. This was a major value. If you took the chance on Ronald Jones when things were uh, a bit trepidatious there, uh, Ronald Jones, the offseason last year, bananas. I mean, there was there was a point in the offseason earlier on where we had the official turn from Jason Moore. Jason Moore, number one Ronald Jones hater in the land, mm-hmm. in the land, finally came around on, well, you know what? Maybe Ronald Jones has something to offer for the NFL, for fantasy football. I believe at one point, Ronald Jones was rumored, whispered, whispered quietly to 
he was set up to be a my guy for someone on this show. And then the Leonard Fournette cut happened, and Tampa Bay brought him in, and it was I have no idea what to do with Ronald Jones. Jones still turned out to be major value. He was the RB37 in ADP. He finished as the running back 16. So, Jason, what are we doing with Ronald Jones heading into next year? Well, it's funny. We're talking about Ronald Jones here because this is obviously the running back truth episode. We're going to get into a lot of the second-tier running backs this year and say, what, what was the truth about Ronald Jones? It's hard to see what he did this year because right now in the playoffs – He's doing nothing. Leonard Fournette has supplanted him. He, they've right. He's become the starter. Uh, they they like mostly his, due to injury. Ronald it, Jones has been hurt. It started due to injury, but as of right now, the last game and and uh, presumably the Super Bowl, um, you've got a healthy Ronald Jones running behind Leonard Fournette. I think that they want the skill set of someone who can be in on passing downs more frequently and drop slightly fewer balls now that I mean here's the reality that I think uh, of Ronald Jones he was a value this year running back 16 and he even missed a couple of games uh, he had a stretch from week four through week 12 where he was a top 24 back all but three weeks he, he was he was a solid fantasy option but those three weeks he wasn't a top 24 back he was a weak killer yeah for, and, and, year, for your team and you know the the reality is he's he is a terrible pass catching option always has been that's why i called him a bust at the nfl combine and stayed through until this previous off season and it's the same reason i will not be taking uh, ronald jones as a value this next season if anything has been made clear through these playoffs it's that ronald jones while being a very good running back is not a very good uh, well-rounded, multi-purpose back for Tom Brady. They want something more out of this position. I expect them to do it in free agency in the draft next year. I don't think it, Leonard Fournette will be back, but I believe that you know there there will be a changing of the guard here because they they need it. You could see it with this offense and all the opportunity for Tom Brady to check down that doesn't ever come to positive you know uh, you know expectation on the play and and. Uh, so I think next year Ronald Jones will be kind of what he was this year uh, as far as a, a two-down back, not involved in the passing game, but he'll be the uh, minority owner of the market share instead of the majority. So I, I won't be in on Ronald Jones next season. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Uh, so how do you – what are your thoughts on the Tampa Bay backfield next year? You, I guess you threw out – you think Leonard Fournette will be moving on. Is there any chance that third-round pick Keyshawn Vaughn, who skyrocketed up rookie drafts, and that has been a bit of a disaster if well, you spent the first-round pick on Keyshawn Vaughn? Yeah, we, we know that Bruce Arians is slow to bring along rookies oftentimes. He doesn't um, – you know, we saw this with David Johnson as Arizona Cardinal fans. Even though he ended up with a good rookie season, it came because everyone in front of him got injured, and, right. and all Arizona Cardinal fans were saying the whole time, like, "Get, get that dude the ball. Get the one who's like always getting the edge and making unbelievable plays every time he touches the ball. Get him involved." And it would not happen until every starter ahead of him went down. He ended up good. The following season, obviously, was phenomenal for David Johnson. So I do think there is a, a an opportunity. Um, for Keyshawn Vaughn to step forward next year because he's out of the rookie. He becomes a veteran, yada, yada. But I mm -hmm. also think that with how much this team was looking for an answer at running back and that they never once really turned to or even sniffed behind uh, Keyshawn Vaughn. Careful I, with that phrasing. Oh, that was on purpose this time. <laughs> There's no accident here. Um, a little Get stanky. A, got a whiff. And, you know, I, I think that what's going to happen is they're going to go in with a plan to free agency in the draft to correct the position. And those plans don't always work out. Players get drafted. Players get signed by other teams. And if that happens, the Keyshawn Vaughn will be what their plan was the whole time. All right. Fair enough. That was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Please visit our good friends, pristineauction.com. And when you do, you use that registration code BALLERS because you will get a $10 credit for your first auction victory. They have Pristine everything. Auction. It's the best sports memorabilia website of all time. Andy's been Signed using it for jerseys. Pokemon cards lately. Just, I mean, you can, Wait, get, what? You, you can get 
signed Pokemon cards? Well, they're not signed. Pikachu's not signing this thing, but they're like, you know, first edition, awesome, cool stuff. I mean, you could get anything. Anything. Right. You got to check out Pristine Auction. Yeah, and use that code BALLERS. Get that $10 credit. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. My name is Jeff. <laughs> He's back, baby. Well, this was one where we figured it was going to happen. Uh, but the 49ers did re-sign Jeff Wilson to a one-year contract. Jeff Wilson is very good. I really like Jeff Wilson. Uh, he, I think he's going to be interesting heading into the draft. Yeah, Raheem Mostert, sure, he's the guy. He's the starter. But Jeff Wilson has proven that if he gets the, the, the full-time job, if he gets the full allotment of opportunities, he – comes through it it's, doesn't matter that doesn't matter it doesn't matter because you know what who do you else, mean it doesn't matter do you know who else proved that if they get the full allotment of kyle shanahan's carries that they come through with a massive game everybody who's ever had a full time of carries everyone it doesn't matter if it was jerick mckinnon getting full-time work or whether it was raheem moster or whether it was jeff wilson if you're running back and you get the full work you're awesome like in those week 16 and 17 where he had 70 percent 83 percent of the snaps but that comes because of injury that's not what Shanahan wants to do. He wants to have all sure, these but guys that's why he's infuriate. Interested. Yeah, I mean, if a late round pick as a stash, uh, you know, depending on where Mostert, where Jeff Wilson goes in in the draft, I assume they'll be later. Uh, they're fine because there is upside there, but you there's going to be a lot of chatter that oh, this guy's you know he he had the breakout. He's going to be the guy. He's not. There is no guy for Shanahan's system until money or draft capital demands it. Yeah, well, Wilson's back. We know that Mostert will be back because they worked out a uh, – they re they redid his contract last year heading into the season. I don't know. Uh, maybe that – it's just the it's just the honey honey glows from my face because Jeff Wilson was part of my championship run through the playoffs there. So he I've was got awesome. Little, I got a little extra sparkle from my man, Jeff. My name is Jeff. Speaking Tuesday, Packers team president Mark Murphy said Aaron Rodgers will be back with the team in 2021. Okay, Mark. <laughs> I mean, I. I, I, I mean, the only so. news that only, was that was only, also there was the report that Jordan Love still not ready to start. Yeah, <laughs> or never and never will be, because they went back and watched his college tape and were like, "Oh, what were we thinking?" Um, he looks just like he does in practice. This shouldn't even be a news blurb. This shouldn't, which is what the news is. The news is that it's news that your. MVP quarterback with multiple years left on his contract is going to play next year. It's sad. It's I look, I, I just like to talk about the Packers quarterback situation and, and how bad they bungled it. Uh, a little bit more coaching news. We got the chargers have hired saints quarterback coach, Joe Lombardi as the offensive coordinator. We already have off season hype train. <sighs> got to get that moving fast. You speaking of fast pace of play, Jason, the chargers up tempo that's more what plays, i'm talking about more fantasy points yeah uh, i don't know we, yeah. We'll, we'll yeah we, we'll see the seahawks hired rams passing game coordinator shane waldron to be their offensive coordinator the Ra the rams coaching staff is just getting pillaged it's, so sean right McVay right now is, sean, sean mcveigh is there yeah and he is in the fresh prince house and he's in the empty room and he's looking around like where did everybody go his entire i mean his Dude, Mario Kart squad is gone. He's he's sitting alone with the the N sixty four all by himself. You want a good job? You go get on that staff right now because <laughs> yeah, next year or the next year you will be a head coach. Is what it feels like. We're gonna talk more about Shane Waldron and and Joe Lombardi here in mid March. Our off season coaching uh, episode that is one of the most important episodes. So make sure you're you're keeping an eye out for that. If you miss it, go back. Uh, if it's not out yet. Just keep listening to every episode, but that will be coming soon. We'll do full breakdown on schemes, play calling, impact for fantasy. It's it's a massively important episode. And before we get into the truth, reminder. Well, you don't need a reminder that the Super Bowl is coming up because that's next Sunday. Wait, it's what Super Bowl is this? Oh, Super Bowl 55. 55. Very nice. But on top of the Super Bowl, making it what should be a national holiday. The other thing making it a national holiday the UDK, the presale will 
officially open. It is time to start marching toward that 2021 hashtag Foot Clan title. EDK is back, and it is better than ever. This is the cheapest possible price you can get in on. There are giveaways like a listener league spot. Uh, we're gonna we'll, we'll break down all those details a little bit more next week, but just want to get everyone ready. Mark it on your calendar. The UDK and the UDK Plus with the brand new Dynasty Pass, taking an in-depth look at the rookies and their production and how all that breaks down for fantasy goodness. And be a draft ready. analyzer. The the UDK Plus is is it's gonna be the best value in fantasy for sure. I'm excited, and we just did a two round uh, rookie mock draft. We've been we scouting did. these rookies. You foolishly let the player I got at the back of the first round get to me um but that'll what, be in there Trevor as well. Lawrence oh spoiler I look you gotta keep it keep it 100 for the people listening yeah. to the podcast there you go but that stuff it, it, yes we are very very excited for the UDK plus and the dynasty pass and the DFS pass all the goodness get that at the lowest possible price let's talk some truth You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Did you ever see, Jason, uh, I was reminded, uh, the music for that drop just completely reminded me of something. They're not really related. Okay. But Did I see what? Well, that's that's uh, that's just a uh, a lawsuit thing. Uh, no, the, uh, Will Arnett, uh, Job from Arrested Development, have you ever seen him do the air guitar to the Law and Order yes, theme song? Yes, I have, and it is phenomenal. He's, it is sensational. If he you gets, haven't seen it, he gets it. in there. He's winning some contests <laughs> with that thing. All right, we talked about the top eight running backs on Tuesday's show, so let's start at number nine, Nicholas Chubb from the Cleveland Browns, the number nine running back, the consistency rank of five. This dude was a top ten running back. And he missed 25% of the season. That's how awesome Nick Chubb is. His splits look uh, look solid. He's the same against top and bottom defenses. He is much better at home. But again, the, the Cleveland Browns schedule was a, a little bit wacky there for in the, uh, the second half where you had all those strange weather games. But Nick Chubb, Jason, what do you, what do you have to say about Nick Chubb? I I think that this is important because the truth about Nick Chubb is that he was the clear better back, and in the beginning of the year, that was not a foregone conclusion. You look at the first month of the season when Chubb had two great games and two bad games, but you had Kareem Hunt. I think uh, you had you had some very strange touchdown variants in those first four games. You did, and you had Kareem Hunt, who you know he was top. 20 back the the first month he was phenomenal when uh Chubb was good he was phenomenal when Chubb was bad and so there there kind of was this narrative I remember it heavy in the beginning of the year that I wasn't even sure which one you know obviously including draft capital it seemed right. like Kareem Hunt was the way better pick but as the season went on when Nick Chubb got back from injury after the bye week in week nine he was phenomenal uh from from that point forward he was the running back five and this team's identity came together. You got to keep in mind, like this was a once again a new coaching staff. So going into next year, I am absolutely looking at the second half of the season where he was consistency rank the number three back. He was overall the actual number five back. You know, he's the only running back in the modern era to rush for a thousand yards and nine plus rushing touchdowns in fewer than 13 games played. That's absurd. He was absolutely phenomenal. The offensive line, the system, everything stacks up for him. Um, and all the Kareem Hunt worries, they're gone for me. I, I do I do say this. He is not the back. Like, last episode, we we're talking about your um, Dalvin Cooks and your Camaras, the guys that are just going to have so many top five finishes. I don't think that's necessarily who... Nick Chubb is he's phenomenal but he's I think his baseline is just so safe um you know I I I, I will be all in on Nick Chubb next next season who do you like more as an NFL player this is this isn't just fantasy because I, Kareem Hunt while it, Kareem Hunt isn't the main guy when you have a player as good as Kareem Hunt he's going to siphon off some of those touchdowns and he takes the the receiving game work who do you like better as an NFL player to watch Nick Chubb 
or Derrick Henry? It's Derrick Henry for me. And okay. I, I, real, I mean, there, it's to each their own. That's just a, a style uh, choice. And for me, there's something special about watching Henry because n no one else is like that where you're just waiting for him to break one off and throw someone into the ground, like not to the ground, okay. but into yeah. the ground. Um, I just really enjoy watching him play. But uh, you, you usually see m more cool plays like just you know incredible footwork and uh, missed breaking tackles and things like that from from Chubb on a regular basis Nick Chubb to me is a, I mean again not not at the top of it but he's in that category of Derrick Henry where 18 targets that's what Nick Chubb saw uh, yeah I mean it he's fine he, he's fine without the passing work uh highest elusive rating per pro football focus because he <laughs> He had as many eluded tackles as Kenyon Drake and Miles Sanders. If you combine their eluded tackles. Wow. That's... Because you can't tackle Nick Chubb. He's a beast. And we'll just follow up that discussion with the Cleveland Browns because Kareem Hunt was the number 10 running back. He had a consistency rank, though, of 26. He was awesome in the first half. He did receive a bump of playing time because Nick Chubb went out after week four and you had a month stretch where it was just Kareem Hunt as the primary guy. Uh, I think that this, I, what, what are your thoughts on Kareem Hunt here, Jason? Because I think this was a, a bit of an inflated situation for Kareem Hunt. I know in those, in the first month where we talked about who's, who, which back do you actually want to have from the Cleveland Browns? And it was a fair question at that point, I lean more that the second half of the season, though, is what you should expect from Kareem Hunt. He is a, an incredible insurance back if if something happens to Nick Chubb. But other than a couple random spike weeks, I think you're going to be mostly disappointed if you're trying to play Kareem Hunt repeatedly week after week. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's what we just said about Chubb. I think the truth is after the Week 9 bye, they had the bye right in the middle of the season, a team getting their identity together, coming out of that bye, both Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb are healthy, and at that point, he was, you know, an okay option sometimes at fantasy, but you had finishes at 29, 34, 32, 50, 49. That's, that's over half of those games the second half of the season where you did not want to play him and he hurt you. I think a lot of players that the the people that check out early, they're going to overdraft Cream Hunt because they're sure. not the ones listening to this episode uh, in, in the early off season. And they're the ones that didn't realize, you know, they, if they checked out at week 13, maybe they didn't make their playoffs. They squeaked out on the outside and they don't realize from that point on, he just wasn't really that good. And it wasn't while he was injured, it wasn't while he was playing poorly. He was awesome. You watch every single game, and when he touched the ball, he's fantastic. He's breaking tackles. He's looking like he's got the nose for the end zone. But it's just a matter of utilization and, and what the role he's slotting into on the team is. Both these guys are talented. If I was a general manager and I had to select one to start a new roster, I would probably take Kareem Hunt. I prefer the hmm. skill set of a receiving back. But for fantasy, opportunity is greater than talent. And the opportunity is clearly Chubb first and Kareem Hunt second. And if you had him and you watched the games, it was like you had to wait till the fourth quarter almost every time for Kareem Hunt because it was like yeah. the first half just wasn't that involved and it's kind of infuriating. I still think he'll be a fine player to have on your roster because you, you, you do have the handcuff situation and the playability, but he'll be overdrafted because players who bailed early won't realize how, you know, how much he hurt your roster at the end of the season. He was drafted, uh, Cream Hunt, that is, was drafted in the fifth round as the running back 25. Are you willing to take him there heading into 2021? That is probably about where I would take him, but I don't think he'll finish there. Okay. I don't, I don't, he, was the, he was the running back 10 this year. People are going to overdraft him. Number 11, how the mighty have fallen. Ezekiel Elliott from the Dallas Cowboys, consistency rank of 17. It was a much better uh, first half. He finally missed a game. Uh, well, a, he missed a game not related for injury to, for <laughs> for off the field stuff. Uh, but here is the thing about Zeke. Look at the first five weeks. He was a top ten running back. Three of those five games, 
He never finished lower than the running back 16. That's when he was playing with Dak Prescott. Yeah, he was the running back five. He was. He, that's what he was through those first through, through the weeks? first five weeks. He was the running back five. He was fantastic for fantasy. I mean, sure, you drafted him probably two, so maybe you were a little disappointed he wasn't top three. But <laughs> right, he was phenomenal. Um, he got banged up as the year went on. The offense got uh, eviscerated with losing Dak and then losing Dalton for a couple of weeks. And he had the itis, man. It, it seemingly out of nowhere, Ezekiel Elliott forgot how to hold on to the football. Six fumbles which is very egregious for him. But uh, at this point, this early on, Zeke has a, he has some things against him. I mean, he has this season where it was a very disappointing season. If you took Zeke at number two or, where, or number three, wherever you drafted him, it was pretty tough sledding. He kept hurting you over and over, and it was Zeke, so you have to play – Zeke, you have to play a, a a player of that prestige, a player getting that that much opportunity. I don't know how you possibly had the 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 wherewithal to bench him, but those first five games, do not forget what he did in the first five games. So, like I'm saying, the things against him, the the production of last year, and name fatigue, where people are ah, you know, I'm, I'm, you get kind of tired of Zeke. You want to draft newer guys, uh, guys that that are flashier. I'm more excited about him. And Zeke is going to drop into the second half of the first round. And I am, at this point, willing to scoop him up there and be excited about it. Are, he, are you with me on that, Jared? Do you, do you still think that Zeke has the the has some time left being a top-tier running back? Yeah, the question entirely is just you're calling your shot on Zeke. Is he still great or has he lost a step and he's starting to – you know, go the way that all running backs go, and you don't want to be the one caught holding the back. And so Tony Pollard had one game where it, where it was just him, and he dominated. I mean, he had a lot of his yardage was on one play, but Pollard showed and proved to the team that he's he has value and he should be getting touched. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of talk. Look, the offensive line is worse. Tony Pollard is now right. in play, so he's not going to be this uh, you know 89, 90 percent snap guy like he's been in the past. Um, he's older, he's got a lot of mileage on his legs, and he looked closer to washed at the end of the season. So plenty of people will be looking elsewhere. I will not. I'm 100% with you. If Dak okay. is back and the touchdown opportunity and the offense is rolling, Zeke's great. He's paid too much. When I watched him, I didn't look, I didn't watch him and go, oh, he looks washed. He looks done. Um, I, th he, I thought he looked He didn't weird. necessarily look like In the middle of the season. Year but self. But the final two games of the season, you're like, oh yeah, okay, he yeah. can still play. No, I'll, I'll, I will, I will, uh, I will draft Zeke um, at the back of the first happily. Yep, and you you saw the rushing yards per game. I mean, his first three years in the league, he was 95 plus per. This was his worst at 65 rushing yards per game. We all know that, but I'm back in running back 12. My dude, Antonio Gibbs season came through in half point here. Uh, the, the beginning of the year was not ideal. It was uh, it was a little bit rough. But then things really heated up in the middle of the season. Unfortunately, it was derailed then by the turf toe injury. And you really couldn't play Gibson with any sort of confidence. But this show was about uh, or the truth and looking forward to the future. Jason, is yes. Antonio Gibson season, is it re are we returning to Antonio Gibson, was this kind of a fluky touchdown thing for you? Where where do you, are your thoughts on Gibson? Um, my thoughts on Gibson are that he is going to be phenomenal, and he'll he'll be one of the best picks next year in the draft. If you look from, you know, he he wasn't really involved in Week One, right? Rookie first game didn't really get out there. Kind of like you look looked at Justin Jefferson, who's like, oh, he wasn't involved in the first two weeks, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, we gotta get this guy on the field. Right, And then he got that injury in week 13. But if you look at from weeks 2 through 12, and this is while he was in a heavy committee with J.D. McKissick, he's still getting worked into the passing game more and more. He was the running back five in total points in that stretch. In his rookie season, he's only going to get more work next year, not less. Um, I do have question marks about the quarterback position. 
Is it going to be Alex Smith? Are they? Uh, we all do, to... Jason. Yeah, we, yeah, I we mean, all that, have those questions. That will that will heavily dictate what happens. But when we're, I mean, that's the whole point of the show, right? What was the truth about Antonio Gibson? The truth was he was awesome on a per touch basis. He was awesome on a per snap basis. His snaps and touches started going up and up and up as the coaching staff genuinely, transparently said, like we he needs time to get more involved in the passing game. He did. They did that, and then he got injured. So, you know, the truth is. He was a bright, shining rookie that got off to a – and it's perfect for the Foot Clan because he got off to a slow start, and he finished injured. So those are the two most watched times where it's like the middle of the season he was great, but that, that could easily get missed. So I, I think I think Gibson's going to be a, a, a great value next year. Yes, th Thanksgiving was delightful. Uh, <laughs> that was a, a very fun time for me and my fantasy team. And rookie running backs, Jay, with 11 rushing touchdowns or more on less than 180 carries. Prepare, <laughs> prepare yourself for this list. Okay, rookie running backs, 11 touchdowns on less than 180 carries. Okay. Gail, Sayer, uh, Gail Sayers. Hall of Famer. Got it. Marcus Allen. Hall of Famer. Herschel Walker. He's got to be a Hall of Famer, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't I don't know if he, he'll make it in or not. Hmm. Maurice Jones Drew. Okay. Antonio Gibson. That's it. <laughs> that's a good I know that's a cherry picking stat. But I don't care because I like it. And that, that sounds really good for the future of Antonio Gibson. Let's get this man involved in the passing game. Janie McKissick is fine. But who would who who do you think a team would rather see catching the football? Janie McKissick or two hundred and thirty pound Antonio Gibson who runs a four four? You would be terrified. Get that man in space. Seriously. All right, number 13. Oh, goodness gracious. He mm -hmm. finishes the RB13? I don't know how it's true. I. It's got to be a lie. It doesn't feel like it. His consistency rank was 24. His play on the field was, I don't know, what it's usually been. <laughs> uh, I don't know how Melvin Gordon finished running back 13, but here he is, Melvin, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon. The third. Running back 13. Uh, He... I, he he did have his weeks. He had his time when Philip Lindsay was was injured, which Philip Lindsay was oft injured throughout this season. Melvin Gordon was a fine play. He was getting enough volume. Ah man, I am just not in on this situation. Now Philip Lindsay is a I believe he's a restricted free agent. I I'm not exactly sure what what Denver is going to do at the backfield. You could see a situation where. It really is Melvin Gordon and then Royce Freeman backing Gordon up, at which point opportunity does matter, and then I'll be somewhat interested in Melvin Gordon. He gets a, uh, a lot of work. But, Jay, how are you feeling about Melvin Gordon and the truth of the running back 13 having a consistency rank of 24? The truth is he didn't help people a lot. There were only stretches where – Philip Lindsay was out and he was fine. And then a game here or there where he got a surprise touchdown. I don't want to play the Melvin Gordon gamble. I don't want to play the touchdown game. I don't believe in Drew Locke. I don't think they're going to um, improve their quarterback situation. I mean, if somehow Deshaun Watson shows up, okay, that's good, but it's not happening. Sorry, Broncos fans. Um, yeah, and, and as a restricted free agent, uh, a hometown hero, uh, a favorite of the fans, a better running back. Philip Lindsay will be back, uh, and if Philip Lindsay's really, back, you think he'll be back in Denver? I do. I do think he'll be back in Denver. Um, mm -hmm. Assuming he is, then Melvin Gordon is someone I will just let someone else take at almost any spot in the draft. Obviously, there's a value at, at a point where you've got a guy who can get the ball 225 times. I think he had 215 carries in 15 games this season, um, where you'll you'll take him and throw him on your roster, but. I don't want, I don't, you know, it's like, you don't know when he's going to end up with the touchdowns on a bad offense. And if he doesn't, it's just not that valuable. And, and yeah. you've said this forever, which is, you know, he's not, he's not that good. Ah, he's not that good. I, I will say this. <laughs> he's fine. He's fine. He can carry a large workload, which is a special trait for NFL and for okay. fantasy. He availability catch, is an yes. ability availability is an ability and he can catch the ball and then he does have one special trait that is just flat out true he has a nose for the end zone certain guys have it 
Certain guys have that extra gear when they get inside the 10 where they, you know, it's like, why don't you do this all the time? It's like they're saving it up. I remember Joseph Adai was like that back in the day where it's like, oh, yeah, this guy is a good back. But goodness gracious, if you're inside the 10, he's going to score. Um, and, and that's Melvin Gordon. But I, I will let someone else take the name value and the recognition and, and have a lousy running back. Running back 14. Your guy, Jason, oh, no. Kenyon Drake of the Arizona Cardinals. He was being drafted last year, right at the beginning of the second, as the RB12. He finished as the running back 14. It's not he too bad. Was, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, unless you see that he busted 27% of the time. He was only good in 53% of his games. Were you happy? Or, uh, not happy. I won't, I won't even, I won't make you go that far. Were you satisfied? with Kenyon Drake's performance where you had to draft him. In the end, I... Or will I, you never be satisfied? <laughs> I'll never be satisfied. <laughs> um, in the end, I, I think I was satisfied. I was so disappointed to start the year, as everybody was. The first four weeks were uh, a putrid abomination. His best finish was running back 17. It got off to slow sledding. But he had a long stretch of i mean i had him on several rosters so i know the the ups and downs of rostering Kenyon drake this year and from week 5 through the end of the season in week 16 assuming you're a week 16er he was a really solid back he was pretty much a staple in my lineup and always had decent games they use him around the goal line i wish he got involved in the passing game the way that he did at the second yeah, half of the previous season that does not look like it's going to be the case. Now, the truth about Kenyon Drake is he was a volume play that was inefficient. Ninth but, most touches at the running back position. But was a, a decent RB2 for your roster. And we don't know where he's going to play football. He's an unrestricted free agent. He was uh, This was a transition franchise tag he was playing under. My belief is that the Arizona Cardinals will sign him again. I think he'll be back. Mm. Andy uh, does not believe he'll be back. Where do yeah, you land? I, I land that I don't think Kenyon Drake's going to be back. If he's not back. You can't pay Kenyon Drake $10 plus million dollars a year. You you can't pay that much for that for what he gave you uh, this year. He, he, just, he wasn't He wasn't a difference maker for the team. He was, in fact, I mean... We are we are Arizona Cardinal fans on this show. We watch all the games, maybe a little uh, extra special eye on our home team. He was he was not a difference making player for this offense. He held them back tremendously at the goal line. I mean, the the fact that he had ten rushing touchdowns with the amount of carries he saw inside the red zone is a travesty. Mm -hmm. This dude should have had fifteen plus rushing touchdowns easily. But he kept getting stuffed all the time. I don't. I don't know how much you can blame him versus the play calling of look like you're going to run well, it up the middle, run it up the middle. But I, uh, and you and you know I'm all about that. I hate the jump. I hate when the when a team lines up jumbo and then just tries to out out testosterone people on the front lines. But I do agree with you that there are players that are just better at that. At that tiny fraction of the uh, of the the field of play, like Melvin Gordon, very good at getting into the end zone, and he could. So a player with that ability could make an impact for this team. And Kenyon Drake, I don't think can. So he's not worth the ten million dollars. So I don't I don't believe he will be back. I think they they'll do something. Maybe they bring in a, a different free agent. Maybe they just make a uh, a day two selection on a running back and they pair him with Chase Edmonds. But I don't think that Drake is back. Okay. Okay, well, we'll have to wait and see. They would have to replace him with something. Chase Edmonds, you know, Benjamin, yes. I don't think is enough to go into this season. So now we get to the point where there's a bunch of different running backs we could talk about. Yeah, Mike um, Davis was the running back 15, but they, you don't really need to know the truth about Mike Davis because the truth is, he one, he's a free agent for the Carolina Panthers. Two, if Christian McCaffrey were healthy, Mike Davis is not going to see the field very much. But... I guess the truth is simply just talking about the Carolina Panthers backfield real quick that there's value there. If if Christian McCaffrey, uh, we, we talk about high value insurance running backs, I'm not sure who the backup is going to be for Christian McCaffrey this year, but they might be worth a look at the very end of drafts. Ronald Jones was the running back 16. We already kind of talked about him in the buy-sell portion of the show. 
here's an interesting name, Jason. Running back 17, Chris Carson. Christopher Carson, RB17, consistency rank of 13. He only busted 8% of the time. He really only had one horrifically bad game, and that was the game against Arizona. And I believe he got hurt in that matchup because he did miss the next month of action before returning, getting his job back, and then was a, a running back two-ish for the rest of the season. What are your thoughts on Chris Carson, and will he be back with the Seattle Seahawks? Yeah, if he is back, then I'm I'm all in in the sense that I I think he's just a really, really good running back who fits the system. This team is talking about running the ball more. We did see at the end of the year they kind of utilized more backs. It was more of a rotation. Um, 46 I think targets some of, for Chris Carson. Sorry, that's yeah. just that that's crazy. He he has the capability of being a good pass catching back. He showed that this year. He he catches it smoothly in stride. That wasn't what he was always known for, but obviously he's worked on that with Russ. I like Chris Carson. I expect him to be back. Um you know, he's an unrestricted free agent. They can do anything they want. They've got Carlos Hyde. I don't know how they're feeling about uh Rashad Penny. Is Rashad Penny still yes, is he Rashad going Penny. into his fourth year? He will be under contract. Uh, this isn't really a team that I've thought about it because, uh, you know, just because they have so many question marks at the running back position. Najee Harris landing on the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, I wouldn't brother. be very mad about that. No, that would be – that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that would be Marshawn Lynch, who's one that of the would comps be that I have. Marshawn, for... Marshawn Lynch with better hands. Oh, man. Oh, man. Now you got me hot and bothered. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that in this division. You don't want that because I have the one hundred one. Oh, for I don't want that because of all of the reasons. I have, I have no one hundred ones. I don't, I don't want that to happen. But that, that would be awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where the only thing we could talk about is the truth of this season, with not next season for Chris Carson. And the truth is, he missed a bunch of games, but he was really good every time he played. He just, he's efficient. Yeah, you know, I, I, I believe he is. Uh, you know, he averages 13 and a half fantasy points per game in his four year career. If he plays, he's a really solid running back. He's not a top guy. He's not a top six, top eight, top 10 weekly back, but he's never valued there. So I think he's going to be, you know, a, a good pick if he is a Seahawk. Number 18 was DeAndre Swift. Uh, he had a consistency rank of 16. He was very consistent in terms of receiving targets. From five. Matthew Stafford. Five. 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 Yep. Eventually. Five more. To five. five. <laughs> but he finished with 57 targets on the season. He was good 62% of the time. He was a – he was trending towards being a real league winning type of a player. Unfortunately, he got hurt. He missed three games there toward the end of the season. The truth, though, is very difficult to break through on DeAndre Swift because – we can look at the truth of what happened last year, but that's that's out the window. That is completely gone for DeAndre Swift. You have Guns Mahoney, a.k.a. Dan Campbell, getting that big, fat six-year contract, talking about biting people's kneecaps. He did, he did throw out, though, that he was talking about using DeAndre Swift in the slot a little bit more, which that would be nice to get him involved even more in the passing game. But... The team will also be without Matthew Stafford. Allegedly, the rumors that Matthew Stafford and the team have come to a mutual decision that they are going to trade him. They are going to burn it all to the ground and rebuild it from the ashes like the Phoenix. DeAndre Swift, Jason, on a rebuilding team with Guns Mahoney. What are your your feelings? Because uh, we all had the arrow way, way up for DeAndre Swift. We were looking back at rookie at the rookie draft, and it's like Clyde. I took Clyde Edwards Alaire at number one. Was that a mis mistake? Like, would I rather have DeAndre Swift in his situation with the Lions? And then that just deteriorated rapidly. So, where are you? Where's your confidence with Swift heading into next year? It, it, it's it's high, but its ceiling is you know the legs are cut out from underneath him because I expect the offense to be bad. However. I don't think Adrian Peterson is re-signed. Um, you know, you've got a you've got a new regime here looking to rebuild. Why would they bring back Adrian Peterson? He doesn't fit what they're looking to do. I think they'll build around DeAndre Swift, and DeAndre Swift's exceptionally talented. So it's He's like, okay, good, for yes. those for those reasons, I'm in. 
But if the team is not very good and the scoring opportunities aren't there and the quarterback isn't one to check it down like Stafford, then, you know, the upside is, is is not there. Whereas, you know, if we want to talk about another rookie that I'm excited about, J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins, oh, yes. who was the running back 20, the second half of the year is really the only thing you need to look at. You know, when, when Mark Correct. Ingram went down and then just got flat out they supplanted. We we said it was going to happen. It happened clearly and effectively. From, from week eleven, when he took the job and the and the team finally had enough of giving the ball to Mark Ingram. From week eleven on, he was the running back eight, averaging almost seventeen fantasy points a game. And he was he was all a top twenty running back every single one of those weeks, except he missed week twelve. Yeah, and the, I mean his his second half consistency score shows that he was the running back thirteen. And that includes a game where he wasn't involved yet in week 10, uh, where he, you know, he, that's one of his bad games. He was exceptionally consistent, reliable, has upside, and is very talented on a team that is going to try every year to break the uh, rushing records. The rushing records. So, More yards after contact than Ezekiel Elliott and Alvin Kamara. He finished top 10 in Pro Football Focus's elusive rating. He has juice. Uh, he has, he's got it. Where's he going to go in the draft? Uh, let's let's say Gus man. is re-signed, and it's just those two, and maybe they sign a fourth, fifth round rookie. You know, uh, uh, add another Justice Hill type or right. whatever. But uh, you know, they're not going to bring in a, another huge back. Where do you think he ends up being drafted? Man, I think Dobbins probably in the second. I don't think he can make his way into the first with. Uh, with with those other running backs, and then you, Travis Kelsey, and then a couple of the top end wide receivers like Devontae Adams, but Dobbins is definitely a second, you know, like that Kenyon Drake area. So that I guess the running like about the running back twelve ish. I think he'll be drafted around there. Yeah, he's. I, I think he's going to be on a lot of my rosters. I mean, when when you can match the team, the defense, the talent, the opportunity all together. Um, Dobbins was one of our you know favorites pre NFL draft post NFL draft mm -hmm. um you know it, the the truth about Dobbins season is you can't you could not have asked for a better season um you know you you saw Clyde Edwards Alaire who you couldn't have We're asked for about a better oppor we couldn't have asked for a better opportunity but you sure as crap could have hoped for a better <laughs> season I yeah. mean yeah if if J.K. Dobbins got that opportunity he would have done something with it and I don't know how much of this you blame on Clyde. I blame a lot. I mean, I, I you know, we, we wait, have, have we officially transitioned to Clyde? I just did it. It was professional. Okay. It was a full <laughs> like it was, it was too professional. I didn't even feel it happen. Yeah, no, it's so professional you don't know that anything is happening. Um you know, it, I was not a huge fan. I I took some heat because I was not a huge fan of the talent. This is pre-NFL draft of Clyde edwards Lair. Everybody loved him. I think he was my running back six, maybe six or seven on 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 my scouting. Um, and then, of course, he went to the Kansas City Chiefs and, as the only first-round pick and right. to the moon. Um, yes. I do think his outlook is better next year than this year. Be more involved in the passing game. But I also, I think some of it's on him. I, I mean, I, I don't think he's as talented as those other rookies we just talked about. And a lot of people thought he was, you know, well more talented. Well more talented. Can yeah, I say no, that? no, you you stuck no? the landing. Okay, I did stick no, I the landing. Yeah, oh no, it's it's perfect. Just keep going. Fantastic. Just say so it he over is well, and over. You know, people. I I think he is not as well more talented. <laughs> yes, than uh, J.K. Dobbins and DeAndre Swift and Cam Akers. Like I'll take all those all those rookies' talent over Clyde edwards alaire yeah, in, coming into the draft process, I don't remember where I had Clyde, but at least four or five uh, on my list. He, I had him behind Swift, or behind Swift, but I'm with you. As soon as he got to the Chiefs, he skyrocketed for me. He only busted 15% of the time, so that he didn't hurt you, but the fact that he was only good 46% of the time and 0% great games, he never actually passed that threshold. Uh, which is cr crazy. Are we sure about that? He was the running back two in week 11. In week 11 when he was the was running that back just two, he only, had, he only had 20 points. <laughs> it was just a uh, super so just low down. scoring that week. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, 20 points doesn't meet the threshold of the great game. And, 
I mean, what more can you ask for than to play with Pat Mahomes as a pass-catching back with Andy Reid and not ever really have any spectacular performances, not really have the consistency you're looking for? He was, you know, a back-end running back, too, when it came to consistency. Um, here's, where did, here's my hope for here's my hope for Clyde edwards alaire Daryl Williams is a restricted free agent. I think you the the team might bring Daryl back. Le'Veon okay. Bell will not be brought back. That dude is he's burnt to a crisp. Damian Williams, who opted out. I like Damian Williams. You know, I've I'm always been a Damian Williams truther since he got to Kansas City, but he is a an un unrestricted free agent in a couple years and. It seems like he might be a cap casualty as well. So I, th I think this team is going to move forward with Clyde and Daryl Williams. Rookie well, running back. Le'Veon Bell. What? Or I'm sorry, Leonard Fournette. Leonard Fournette will be part of this roster. Don't next year because that. do not put that evil on oh, me. Oh, it's abs It's absolutely going to happen. Th and it's their secret sauce. They win a championship because they by just signing. They get Lashawn McCoy. And yeah. they're like, oh, he's a big name. He's a pass catcher back. We need him. And then they're like, oh, this dude's washed. Let's win a championship without him. And then they go get Le'Veon Bell. The running game it matters. We're getting a good running back. And then they're like, it's, it's just a joke. We're only signing him so we can pass the ball more. And then next year they'll get Leonard Fournette, and they'll, he'll be the backup not played, and they'll win another Super Bowl. I mean, if, if they're really going all in on this strategy, it's not Leonard Fournette that they're bringing in. They're bringing in Gurley. Oh, that is the name. You're right. Because he is far more washed. <laughs> yes. A like Leonard Fournette's name. got oh. something left. It's, That's, it's, th thank you for the astute analysis, Mike. You are um, welcome. Todd Gurley will be a Kansas City Chief next year. Oh, that's uh, that's a guarantee. I mean, you know, look, we, we would never say go to Vegas and put down a healthy bet <laughs> uh, on, a, on a future prop. We would never say that. But it's clearly um, a... a a guarantee at this point pretty it's pretty close but check this out for positive touchdown regression if you're looking for that for Clyde Edwards Alaire rookie running backs who had 180 or more carries he had the third lowest amount of rushing touchdowns over the last 20 years you had TJ Yeldon's rookie year in Jacksonville where if you remember that where he just kept getting nonstop volume only two uh two rushing touchdowns Melvin Gordon Way back when, it, it, do you remember Melvin Gordon's mm -hmm. rookie year where he the fates conspired year. against him? Well, it, it, they, 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 everything, I don't, I don't, it was crazy. The circumstances that just kept happening over and over because Melvin Gordon had zero rushing touchdowns his rookie season. And then we know that that has certainly bounced back in a very positive way. I'm with you. I The outlook for Clyde Edwards Alaire is. Much it's much better than it was for this year to me. Clyde Edwards Alaire, up until the point of his injury, was a top twelve running back. Uh, like he was still there, even though he wasn't giving you weak winning performances. But that's because he wasn't getting those those burst games where he was scoring a bunch of touchdowns. So I'm still rank in. These three, oh, I'm Clyde. Okay, rank these you. three next year in the draft. You've got Swift, Dobbins, and Clyde Edwards Alaire. How are you drafting those three? What order? Oh my. Okay, I will go. There's no softballs here. That's that's a that is that is a very ball. difficult. I think. I think I will go Dobbins, Clyde, Swift. Yeah, that's probably how I'd have it. That's how well. you got it. Yeah. All right. Uh, we got a we got a little bit of time here. We'll talk about a couple more guys, but Miles Sanders. What is oh, the truth about Miles Sanders' season? I don't know. The, the truth is that I had Miles Sanders, and I was very excited at the beginning of the year to that he he made it through our. Uh, if you heard us talk about our keeper lottery, Miles Sanders was one of the guys that I put into the lottery. I was able to get him back, and back into the the draft from my team went Kareem Hunt. You know, a couple weeks into the preseason, that seemed like, oh, that's spectacular. I got Miles Sanders, all this talk about him being a three-down guy. Week one, he's hurt. Mm -hmm. He's already hurt. And Kareem Hunt comes out and dominates, and then Nick Chubb goes down. I was like, this, how is this happening? That I was so excited for Miles Sanders, and Kareem Hunt is the guy that I should have wished I ended up getting. Now, Miles Sanders came back, and he had some, some very strong games to start. Then it 
it turned into a dumpster fire in Philadelphia. A couple big games at the end of the year. Jason, I have no idea. I have no idea how to feel about Miles Sanders. Because, yeah, he was the running back three against the New Orleans Saints because he had an 80-yard rushing touchdown. Mm -hmm. And that was the only thing that saved him from having a stretch of six straight games of being a complete dumpster fire for fantasy purposes. And he had a great Where game you against my Pittsburgh because he had a 70-yard rushing touchdown. Otherwise, he had a yes. terrible game. Now, um, you, you, you can't take that away from Miles. Like that's built, That's baked into who he is as a player. He has uh, big playability. But I, I feel like I am a hard out on oh, Miles really? Sanders right now. I think now. it's yeah. because you dealt with the burns. I mean, when you touch the oven when it's Possibly. on – you don't want to go back to the oven, <laughs> um, it, it, you know, and uh, the way that I see it, I, I did have a lot of shares of Miles Sanders this year, so uh, I'm not, you know, I, I had to, thankfully I was wearing the mittens, um, so my hands didn't burn on the stove quite as often, but the reality is this is a cash-strapped team that does not have the draft capital to go out and acquire another running back. I think they're going to come back into this next season with Sanders. They have as offensive clear. line problems. They have quarterback problems. Oh, they certainly do. However, we we did see that you know with Jalen Hurts, he was a uh, you know a quality running back. Now, granted, it it seems like it's Carson Wentz. There's there's just so many question marks around the team. We're going to have to wait to see how it plays itself out. I believe I will be in on Miles Sanders next year. And I believe the reason is because it'll be talent plus opportunity. I don't think there will be another guy there to truly split the the workload. If there is, if they sign someone good, I think they will be a full committee because the one question with Sanders was, can he hold up through that work? He missed the beginning of the season. He missed the middle of the season, dealt with injuries in the first opportunity he's been given to really be a, a true workhorse. And so you've got to, you know, if, if I'm uh, Dr. House, if I'm Hugh Laurie, the general manager of the <laughs> Philadelphia Eagles, I have to worry about that. I have to say, do, you know, uh, do I need to bring in another back? So I, I think we've got to wait. But the talent's there. You see that on a play-by-play -play basis. Um, but with the coaching changes, quarterback changes, and not knowing who's going to be in the running back room, uh, it's too early to call. All right. Uh, is there any more players that you want to highlight? I mean, there's – there's still a lot of guys to talk about, but we are up against the clock. Um, Who's your you favorite? know the, the 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 last player that I think is really important to talk about um, is one of your favorites. It's the gas man. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, and and more so than just the gas man, uh, Savon Ahmed was the consistency ranked 25, 25th player. He was better than that if you take out the games he was you know completely uninvolved in. The point is that the Miami Dolphins, the utilization that they had of whoever yes. the running back was is exceptionally valuable for fantasy. Now, what's ironic here is they're in the running for Deshaun Watson, and if mm -hmm. they get Deshaun Watson, then they probably don't have the draft capital to spend on a really good running back. Right now, it looks like, oh, they've got the draft capital to That's go after a, a really point. good running back. So the gas man could end up playing for the Deshaun Watson led Miami oh. Dolphins. So, like, oh. if I'm in a dynasty league, offseason trades are happening, I take the shot. You know, because Ga right now, if they don't get Deshaun Watson, I don't think Miles Gaskin's a thing next year. I think they spend high draft capital, you know, uh, whether that's a, a, a late first. I think they've got multiple firsts or um, the second rounder on a great back and bring them in a, a true three down skill set. Miles Gaskin, you know, I made fun of him on on our Sirius XM show the the first game because you did you disparaged the I gas did man. disparage the gas man, and you know what? I, I hope believe, you feel shame. I don't at all. I believe it's fair. His utilization was awesome for fantasy. He was great. All that's true. He but averaged like, the seventh most touches per game. Exactly. Here you have Miles Gaskin getting eighteen plus touches a game. That's that's right behind Zeke. That's ahead of Alvin Kamara. If you give those touches. They're keeping the tank full. If they if you give those touches to a true quality back, it will be an elite fantasy player. And every time I watch Miles Gaskin, he's fun. He's electric. You just hope nobody's right next to him because they will smash him to the ground. He's an itty-bitty thing that can get tackled by anyone out there on the field. That's 80% the good. 0% bust. Exactly. He had the same amount of touches per game as Zeke. I mean, when you're touching the ball that much, 
It doesn't matter if you're efficient. It doesn't matter if you're and, – and the best part is it was in the passing game too. So I loved the gas man for fantasy. Um, I love the role on the offense. And if, you know, if uh, ETN shows up here instead of the gas man, I mean, that's just going to be uh, an incredible spot. And I got one guy I want to highlight before we get out of here because this player was the running back 27. And yet, he had a consistency rank of 11. 67% of his games were good. He only busted 17% of the time. He was good. It doesn't feel like it. But David Johnson was very good for fantasy purposes. The reason it doesn't feel like it, I think a, a huge part of that is that early season, we talk about it a lot, the early season stamp weighs heavier than it should. But that I mean, you're we spent an entire offseason talking about guys. You're really excited for football, and if someone craps the bed in those first couple of weeks, you get upset about it. But David Johnson was very solid for fantasy purposes. He ended up with 50, 46 targets. We don't know yet what the what's going to happen with Deshaun Watson. Will he be back on the Houston Texans? Will he not? We don't know what's going to happen with with David Johnson or Duke Johnson. If you take a look at their contracts. And I mean, you got you got a whole new regime here in Houston. If you take a look at the contracts, both either one of those guys, David or Duke, could be a cap casualty, creating a huge opportunity for fantasy. But with the world that he had last year, David Johnson had enough volume. He had enough work in the passing game. Just don't forget about David Johnson. That's all I'm saying. It's not gonna. He will not be a fun draft pick. By any stretch of the imagination, but he might be just enough to uh, you know, just add some solid weight, some strength to your team. Sure, I could, I, I could see that. He, he, he surprised me for how well he looked, how how good he looked on the field. He actually looked healthy, looked fast, he looked strong. All the things that we used to love about David Johnson. Uh, but since we don't know who his quarterback is, we don't know who his team is going to be. Obviously, he's under contract, but he's only a $2 million dead cap. And I feel like this team kind of – I could be wrong, but I think they regret the the, the trade um, <laughs> uh, of DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson. And that's kind of like this leftover – it's got that leftover stench. You know, it's like uh -huh. that food in the fridge that's been there too long. And you've got to – sometimes, like, it's delicious, but you got to throw it out because it's stinking up your house. So – uh, it, too too much, um, I, I think, could change to know what to do with him for next year. All right, that's going to wrap it up for the truth about running backs. That means that next week we're going to be talking about some wide receivers. Keeping the truth series rolling. Thank you for listening to the podcast. We will see you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.